So we're just moving some cars around. A lot of you guys were requesting some cold revs on the, not cold revs, some revs on the E60 M5. So we'll see if she's warmed up yet. I've been running, I don't know, a good seven, eight, nine minutes. Five grand. I don't want to blow it up. I'm scared to death these rod bearings. All right, let's get this thing pulled up. Let's get the E39 in the lift and check into those control arms. All right, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to lift the car all the way up, let's take the wheel off. Okay, so I did this side. This side wasn't really in very good light. This side isn't a lot better. Uh, two more days for all the camera stuff is here in the lighting. So, but here's the basic situation. I've got a 21 mil, let me grab a light, hold on. Okay, so we got a 22 mil bolt on this ball joint. Um, come back to that here in a second. And then you got two 18 mils back there to take the through bolt and the nut off, which isn't, one nice about the GoPro, you get it right in there. But isn't that bad? And then how, I don't have enough damn hands. Hold on. How these come off, these have little latches. And if you're real careful with them, there's one under here. So you gotta pull this out first and then pop that latch, and then you get a screwdriver, I'm gonna break it. You pop that out, and this whole plastic holder all comes off of there. Kinda of like this. And half the time you break them, half the time you don't. Get off of there. You're creaking and cracking. Yeah, so actually I don't think it broke. I think it just fell off because they didn't hook on the bottom. Yeah, it just fell off. It's all right. We pick it up out off the floor here. So now our wires are all loose. So uh, like I said, I pre-sprayed this guy, a little WD-40, a little penetrate oil, and we're going to go and try to get it off. Now, if it does not come off, you're going to get some needle nose vice grips down in here to hold that shaft. If you try to use something on here, Usually these are pretty soft it'll strip out and you can put a wrench on here a small wrench But like I said Usually it doesn't work out. But you can see the boot how It's just all blown out And uh, so let's try to zip this off. We'll double wrench the back. We'll break that loose You should just be able at that point in time pull the whole ball joint out and then pull it out of the back Okay, so you can see we got it off but what we had to do is a little bit hot. Like I said, got our noodles vice grips down here and pinched it. That way we could actually get it out. Now, get out of there. To make sure to not pull on the ABS wire very much. And we don't have the back loose yet, but we should just be able to slip it out and come off of there. And you can see these things are like real crunchy. The last one I took off was real crunchy whenever you rotated it. So it was totally, totally shot. Now, the other side, I couldn't get it off even with pinching it. So I went ahead and took my map gas torch and just carefully torched on the threads a little bit to get a little bit hot. 
and kept bumping the impact and it came right off. And just to recap on her, what do you have to do to get these off? You can't, you might be able to get a ratchet on this side, the other side you cannot. But just double hooking two ratchets together. And you just keep turning a little bit and eventually, we're loose enough now to turn it by hand. Let me get the other one on the other side and we'll hold it and it'll come right out. All right, then let's take the nut off, reach in there, push the bolt out, pull that out, keep your bolt and nut side by side. Stay there. Careful of all that. Lift that up and pull it out just like so. And there's the old arm. You can see those rear bushings. They hardly ever go bad. They're almost solid or pretty much are solid. And then our new one, without getting our floor all freaking dirty. Our new one's right here on the table. I'll clean the table off a little bit, but I definitely need to start on the workbenches in here too. So here's the new one. They are particular from left to right. And these are supposed to be these Miley brand when I bought them, but I don't see that stamp anywhere on them. But who freaking knows, right? I know they look good. They have like a clear boot on there though. I'm not really sure about that. But who am I to judge? The same way we'll go in here, we'll put that up, take the nut off, and it should slip right in. But a new one can be a little more of a pain to get in than the old one taken out because it's not all floppy. Go in here, something like that. I'm just gonna go in there and push it kind of past a little bit and then pry it out. I can't do it one-handed, but you get the idea. Then you push this back over when it's pried out and it goes right in. Tap it a little bit, it'll go right in, and then reinstall. Now the, the front nut, we'll just take the impact on the first setting, which is about 60 foot pounds, and just bump it on. And the inner one, we'll just hog it down, just with a single wrench, not a double extended wrench, just one wrench on each side. We'll tighten it up like that. Now that bar right there does slip in there, so there's no reason on this particular arm to tighten it down. It looks like these forward toe arms are actually all right. Sway bar links, they're not making any noise, but they look uh, kind of original. But no problems with them, keep an eye on that. We did ceramic brake pads on this thing. The rotors we did not do, but they were good. And then probably should have painted these. There's our 19 mil adapter slash spacer that adapts it to uh, 32 mil, can't remember exactly. I think it was 30, uh, 62 to 64 or something. Adapt it down so you can use a regular wheel. E39s have a bigger center hub. So this comes out a little bit, you can see right there, and it actually adapts down to a smaller hub. And that's a big, a big thing. I'm gonna go and reinstall this and we'll be right back. All right, so here I reinstalled, everything's clipped back in, everything's tight and good to go. Now, this problem corrects your tires wear on the inside, obviously. There's something else you gotta check while you're here too. So let's lift the car the rest of the way up and let's take a look. Now, these adjustments right here are for your, your toe in and out. And those could also move around. They, if you hit a bump, they get knocked out of whack. If you get alignment, they'll adjust that. You can see these are kind of crusty, but they should move. And the procedure is, uh, they can break the nut loose and then turn, was it this? Yeah, turn this side, this is the cam bolt. And just a, a quick tip, you can actually see the top of the tire move in and out. So if you wanna set these at zero, there's no lean on them, um, you could just visually see it. I mean, the cam bolt, when you turn it, it's real easy to, to set that, right? You don't have to have a alignment machine, super, super easy. Now, I'm scared to turn these because you can see now we have some camber, maybe you can see it on camera, just a little bit, but these tires and wheels are so big, they'll touch that inner fender well, so I can see where they've been touching at. I don't see where this one's been touching at all. 
Let's see if I can see on another one. Anyway, I'm kind of scared to mess with that because you could easily make a bigger tire like this rub. I think it's just rubbing right there where that inner fender is kind of flapped out a little bit, clapped out a little bit. Cause I don't see any other rub marks whatsoever anywhere on her. So we might try to, while we're right here, let's go ahead and see if we can't get some adjustment out of those. Uh, we're gonna have to put the wheel back on before we could do this one. And let's see if we can set them all at zero. Okay, so we got them both loose, actually really easy. Now it's not uncommon to see one tilted in, the other one straight, or the other one the other way. And like I said, when you hit bumps, they do move around. So let's just see here. Let's put a ratchet up here. Now I just bumped it with the impact on this side just to break it loose. But you can see, maybe you can see. So it's going out. So that's going in, out on the bottom, so in on the top. It's gonna kick back here. And right there is zeroed out. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll finger, we'll tighten that up. Probably should start with a wrench, tighten the nut up on the back side. And we'll take our impact and we'll bump it down and tighten it up. And I gotta lower it down, put the other wheel back on, raise it back up a little bit, and do the same thing. I could probably do it without the wheel on actually. As you can see, it's so good on here. You can see it moving in and moving out. We're gonna go all the way in. Whoop. Right there. And usually the biggest part of the lobe's all the way in right there. So now we're both set at zero. We'll tighten them down. I'm trying to think of anything else we need to do while we're under here. Anything else we need to look at. And there is, yeah, I need to put that back in. Forgot to do that. And then this is awesome, man. If like, here's, it's leaking a little bit. This was all cobbled up real bad. Actually, you can see something leaking up there. Um, I need to redo that. There's nothing there to attach that to. So it's a little bit funky. We'll have to try to get a different bolt or something on it. Uh, but the leak is actually pretty minimal. You can see a little bit of oil residue down here on the bottom. It has a new rear main in it. But uh, it's all very, very interesting. This one has all new thrust arms on it. And these caps are missing on that, so it doesn't have that. These front struts look all right on this car. And we're running no sway bar links in the front of this because this thing rides the smoothest like that. It rides like a damn Cadillac. That strut looks like it's okay. And all the rest of that stuff looks good. Huh. All the oil residue is on it's old before we do the engine swap. But all the struts look good. This has M Sport struts on it, so they sit a little bit lower, which is kind of an inconvenience. While we're here, we need to fix a few things like this. Needs to be put back on there. But now we have a lift that's all easy to do. And this little flap here, I think we're missing, we're missing a bolt there. We might trim that just a little bit on the very back side of there, just because it makes it easier on clearance. You're not dragging the pipes and everything look good. A little bit of old residue on the rear dip. I think I changed this fluid early on. I just really can't remember. And then the Guibo is the other thing. The Guibo is right there on this car. It actually looks really good. So we won't mess with that. Transmission mounts all look good. Interesting. Okay. And there it is. That's pretty much all I can show you on this car. We're just gonna put the wheel back on. We just torqued all these down with the with this ratchet and then the um, wrench, snugged them up, held that side with the wrench, ran down with the impact. That impact on low is about 65, 70 foot pounds. That should be plenty for that. A lot of guys have put them down at 100. I find though, if you do it too much, you overdo it, 
what's going to happen, try to get in the right light. What's going to happen is it's going to be less of a chance you're going to be able to break it loose. I've had a few of these cars, especially the X5, I think this X5 actually, I couldn't get it broken loose. It was all seized up. But they looked like they were okay anyway. But you could tell when you're behind this thing, the X5, they're tilted in a little bit. So you can see now, we're still tilted in just a hair. Well, the car's up in there, so they're gonna, they're gonna duck in. Hopefully when we let it down, it's not rubbing. But since the top didn't go out, the bottom went in. We should be really good on it. That's gonna be the rear upper control arm and the rear alignment, the rear ghetto alignment for the E39. That's all models M5, 525, 528, 530, 540, 520, 523, I don't know what all. All those models. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. We'll see you soon.